We're about to shift from the receiving of the great blessings during Birkot HaShachar to a yearning and a longing to be close to Hashem. Welcome to the world of Korbanot. We're now setting out into a new section of the journey of the Sidur, a section called Korbanot. Korban is actually a word which is difficult to translate because sacrifice, which is its usual translation, doesn't really bespeak the warmth and intimacy that this word intends to imply. Korban actually means to come close. And while I know we all struggle with the fleshiness, the death, the burning, all of these elements of uh, sacrifices that are very difficult for our current sentiments to hold. Nevertheless, we continue to talk about the sacrifices and are actually invited into a particular kind of a spiritual state which they are meant to elicit. So in this um, learning that we're going to do now and the meditation that's going to follow it, I want to put us in touch with what the essence of this is, but we need a little bit of introduction before we can get there. So first of all, of course, taking a physical object in any situation and using it as part of a spiritual work is always something challenging. It does feel like perhaps it would just be best to let go and move into an inner state of calm and connectivity as we do during the meditations. This whole involvement with physicality is itself a challenge for any kind of a spiritual path. And yet um, our Torah is very much set on our involving the physical world in our worship of the divine, in our experience of the divine. It's not the same thing to put on tefillin, hold them close to your heart, sense how the words of divine unity are pressing against your flesh, your muscle, the open area on top of your skull that was once available to the expansion of your brain and now continues to be something of a crevice to let things in. It's not the same as just thinking about those things when it's experienced in the flesh. It's not the same for us to talk about love and do acts of love with our bodies. And, and here's the transition. It's not the same to talk about the kind of yearning for the divine that is a meditative and spiritual and psychological posture and actually taking a physical object and dissolving it in the presence of Hashem's great and infinite spirit. So this is not uh, apologetics. This is really an uh, attempt to contextualize what's going on in the world of Korban. We're taking something that's living, the ultimate gift, the ultimate giving over, and transforming it into an activity of dedication and devotion, which has to do with many important elements of what this journey is about, which, well, in the meantime, we don't actually ha do with an animal, but nevertheless, we will be reading verses that refer to those. So here we go into that world of Korban. So let's move back into what it is that's happening at the Mizbeach, at the altar. The first thing we do when we read into Korbanot is we talk about the Akeda, about the ultimate sacrifice which Avraham was willing to make of his only, his singular, his beloved child Yitzchak. And already we get the sense uh, at the beginning of that reading, as those especially who know the end of the reading, that this is a test to see if Avraham is willing to give up that which is of most preciousness to him. In the end, of course, Hashem says, no, no, not your child. Take an animal instead. But I, we already are intended to get a sense of 
are you willing to give up that which is nearest to you here in this world for this, for this dedication to the nearness of Hashem and to the bringing down of his uh, presence into this world? So here's what I think is happening when we're doing this korban and how it can become part of your own meditative practice in the morning. We're all here embodied with many different possessions. These possessions all have forms of physicality that give them boundaries and specificity, whether it be the chair I'm sitting on, whether it be uh, something which is a sacred object, an important object to me, whether it be my own body. How attached am I to these forms? How connected Am I to the inner powers, which these forms are an outer expression of? You know, in our perception of what the nature of reality is, so physicality is actually a kind of a meeting point between how our uh, mind uh, is operating, how our consciousness is aware, and what is actually going on out there. We're never really fully seeing what is there. We're only seeing something which is how our minds can meet it. And I say this even on the most simple physical sense. There are so many different ways you could be seeing me right now, whether it be with infrared light, whether it be with all kinds of electromagnetic bands that pick up aspects of me that your eyes are insensitive to, whether it be a microscopic look beyond even the cells in my body, <clears throat> whether it be a quantum look in which you would just be seeing energy fields that are, that are in, in an unending and in unpredictable interaction. I mean, <laughs> there's so many ways to see me. This is only one particular of them. Well, it's the truth of the depth of reality that it's far beyond what these forms are. And in the most profound spiritual sense, and the most relevant perhaps to us, so the divine is coming to expression through all of this physical world, which we are utilizing in this very strange and mysterious interaction between the physical and the non-physical, or beyond the boundaried physical, uh, the interaction between the energies of life and this particular form which they are formed into. So we're always kind of meeting the external, but accessing something which is far beyond it. So that, I think, is really what sacrifice or korban is intending to put us in touch with. We're really being invited to let go of the specificity of our physical form and let go of those things which we've become so attached to as defining what it means to be living and to really declare, and actually in a, the actual act of Korban, to physically declare, I am far more than any of these, just as they are far more than any of their physical forms would indicate. There is being itself. There is life itself, which has come into this particular shell in this particular moment of time, but actually continues to live through many myriad ways in which it comes to expression. And therefore, I'm letting go of the specificity of this particular meeting in order to get in touch with simple being, simple life, simple presence, which lies beyond the veneer, the externality of the physical manifestation of it. The ultimate test is actually to do that with that which is most dear to us. But Hashem has declared, never do this with a human being. But animals offer this realm within which we can uh, bring them to this um, higher expression of the power of life, even though it means the giving up of their physical life. 
And putting the ethical questions aside right now, uh, far more animals are sacrificed, so to speak, for us to eat them than would ever be on the altar in Jerusalem. So uh, I think we need to put that into something of a perspective too. But on the bottom line of all of this, what we're doing is we're letting go of the external form in order to make access to the inner essence. In fact, the Zohar describes that these, this service of korban would create such a deep intimacy of love between everyone who was in the presence of it that they would be filled with joy and a bliss of intimacy which is unachievable in any other way. So the Zohar describes the music that the Levim are playing during the course of this and especially how really the Torah describes it that the divine spirit would rest upon all those who are in the presence of this bringing of the korban, this coming close, this reaching beyond the exterior to get in touch with the interior. The experience of this was apparently something like when you're with a beloved and somehow you can both close your eyes, let go of the specificity of your identity and ego and really merge and come to the deepest closeness to that other human being with whom you share this space of love when we're both letting go of our exterior and getting in touch with as much as we can the interior essence of who we are. This is really what's occurring during the course of Korban. And for those who are saying it in the morning, as part of the process of the journey of the Sidur, it's really an invitation for us to be able to say, Ma'anu, Mechayenu, Machastenu, Matsitkenu. What are we really? What are all these deeds that we do? What are all the powers that we experience? What's all the goodness that we've been involved in? After all, it is all encased in this finite body. There's something far more essential that we want to be involved in. And at the end of that passage I just, I just quoted, we declare Shema Yisrael, there's only one God, you are alone. I yearn to be attached to you. I yearn to let go of all of this, to be in the ultimate closeness to you. And this is not a death wish. <laughs> this is a wish for a kind of a contact with the most intense aspect of what it means to be alive, which can be accessed by this combination of both yearning, of letting go, and of getting in touch with. This is the time to imagine the fires, which are the most uh, direct way we can represent the light of which all things are made. This is the time for us to get in touch with our yearning to move beyond what the physical world can offer us and to get in touch with the essence of what life and being are. This is a time for us to step into a deep meditation of fiery aspiration for the closeness to the divine, even if it means at the cost of our giving up the presence that we have in this physical life. This is all, this world of the Korban, which comes at the interim between the celebration of all of the great blessings which Hashem has given us to affirm and express love and desire for our individual uh, unique self and at the other end of our being in the Korban realm will be Psuke de Zimra, singing songs of love for Hashem and is having created such a beautiful world which we live in. But in the middle, we need to get in touch with letting go of our attachment to all of this, with letting go of our placing everything in to the physical forms which things have taken, and to getting in touch with the essence, with the energy, with the fire, with the yearning, with the powers out of which all of our physical world are made and of which they are constructed. So welcome to Korban, 
And I invite you to the meditation, which is to follow, and also to see a beautiful film, which I've prepared, to get us in touch with these most elemental aspects of our avoda, of our service to Hashem. Fill us and all of creation Divine light and blessing Fill us with joy, with love And yet, how deep is our desire How expansive our love how much our heart is flowing with a fervor unreserved. How much is our desire to commune in the perfect one who's all. How much is our yearning thirsting for that is beyond all known. vessels completely surpassed. For in truth there's none but him, infinity beyond. My true life is so, so vast. Climbs to distant heights. He is the only one. My desire burns for you, it is the fire which is you, oh take me unto thee, embrace me, consume me in your light. Release 
your limited self Where the bliss is infinite The laughter is so wide When the yearning is for him There is no whole perfection Except his simplicity All expands to him all rises to him. Oh God, open my boundaries. Let myself be lost in you.